Hello everyone! In this video, we will be trying to create and apply our own open pose maps to our ComfyUI. Instead of using the automatically generated ones from the neural network, I'll explain. The neural network generates open pose maps perfectly based on the images it is presented with when it comes to fairly simple poses. But what if a character's pose is complex and difficult for a neural network to recognize? For example, if the character is facing away from or at an angle to the camera, their arms or legs may not be visible. That's when the real chaos starts. The neural network is unable to fully read the pose, and as a result, it doesn't finish drawing the details of the skeleton or doesn't draw what it should be. And everything would be fine if we were only dealing with static images. In that case, we could provide the neural network with hints to tell it exactly what we wanted. However, what about animations? When we upload a video or a sequence of frames, we expect to get a sequence of open pose maps, but these may contain inaccuracies or errors in individual frames. As a result, limbs appear out of nowhere and disappear into nothingness. The proportions of the body change suddenly for no apparent reason. If the character is shown with his back to the camera, there is no limit to the imagination. A neural network could draw eyes on the back of the head or replace the hair on top with something completely unbelievable, eliciting skeptical smiles from viewers. I came up with an idea to make a human model out of colorful sticks in the Blender program, then assign him a skeleton and then perform the animation. I don't know, perhaps someone has already created this, but I have not seen it yet. There is an online tool that allows users to create different poses in a 3D environment. The program then converts these poses into open pose maps, as well as normal and depth maps for hands and feet. However, as far as I know, you can only create individual images on that platform, not animations. So I created a stick figure model based on the proportions of a basic skeleton. I assigned materials to each part of the model, ensuring that the color of each material exactly matched the one specified by the open pose maps of the neural network. That's how the little man turned out, exactly the same as in the open pose maps, but in three dimensions. Next, we will make it two dimensional. Next, I attached this model to the skeleton. Now we have a fully developed stick figure model that can be animated. I'm exporting the model in FBX format. I've selected both the mesh and the armature. Let's add some animation to character from the Mixamo website. We can upload model to the website and then add the animation. And oops, something went wrong with the skeleton. I had selected a more detailed version with fingers and facial features, but Mixamo's algorithms only seem to recognize the basic version. I return to the blender and attach the basic skeleton to the model. I'm uploading the model again to the website. And yes, such a skeleton is acceptable. I'm sending him to the stage. Let's try it out on something simple for now. How about the usual walking gait, for example? I'm downloading an animated model to test it out. Reopen the Blender program, but now we choose the second animation environment, importing our animated character, hiding the skeleton using the H key, and now our two-dimensional character is without shadows and has a uniform color fill. Now it remains to adjust the image and create a perfectly black background. I click on the output icon, and here I've set the parameters for the output image. I select the camera. Next, click on the camera properties icon. To get the subject closer, increase the focal length. With the G key pressed, I move the camera so that the character is centered. When performing all actions, the cursor should be positioned at the beginning of the video. I add a plane by pressing Shift A and selecting Plane from the menu. I unfold the plane and place it behind the character. We will assign a black mate material. This is the second button from the bottom. Let's create a new material. Here we write the value of one, and here too, everyone, we have a perfect black background, rendering the animation. We go to the folder where we saved the rendered images. So we have a map of the open pose that is close to perfect. Pay attention to the clarity of the lines and the quality of the image. And most importantly, all body parts are accounted for. Every finger is in its proper place. It's time for the tests. Here's my workflow. Here are the input data, the parameters for the output image, the number of frames, the checkpoint and VAE model, and the loader with open pose maps. These are the lures that I use. One of them, the SD15 adapter, is required, while the rest are optional. 
positive and negative prompts. Control net and apply advanced control net model loader. If we needed to create open pose maps from an image, we would use the DW pose preprocessor. However, since we have our own custom open pose maps, there is no need for this preprocessor. Animate diff. I use the stabilized high model and an IP adapter with a sample image. K sampler and VAE decode. The girl walks with a gait that corresponds to the one we have defined in the open pose models. Everything works well, except for some minor issues with her clothing around her wrists. Nevertheless, the overall result is quite satisfactory. And if we continue to refine and adjust the settings, I am confident that it can be improved even further. We are not focusing on the background at the moment. I will create the background later. Despite some flaws, he is quite watchable. Again, please note that this is only a draft and the very first step in the process. Let's try something a bit more interesting and challenging. Take this hip hop move where the dancer turns his back and side. New open pose maps are generated using the same algorithm. I follow the same workflow as with the girl. However, this approach does not work in this instance. The neural network is unable to accurately determine the correct orientation of the character's back in relation to the viewer. The background is also changing randomly, but at this point, it doesn't seem to matter. However, the boy's dancing is quite beautiful. Here, we will use the batch prompt schedule, latent input node, where you can enter dynamic prompts. The clip value is passed here. Here is the number of frames for this node. It is important to note that if you do not provide this parameter, the results may be incorrect and the outcome may not be satisfactory. This is a simple text node that contains a part of the prompt, which is placed at the beginning and is immutable. In this text, I am discussing quality, high detail, and other important aspects. This information is passed as the pretext parameter. This is part of the prompt and is also relevant to all frames. But this is the dynamic part of the prompt where we describe the changes between frames. From frame zero to frame 15, the character is shown sideways. From frame 16 onwards, the back of the character is visible. The lines can be extended to describe the movement more clearly. Please note that this connector in the node should be named conditioning, not positive and negative. These nodes are similar, but when pause and neg are used, the result is incorrect. The input latent goes to the K sampler. So everything is going well, the staff are changing as they should. And here's the main point. The frames change according to the prompt only if the video is short. However, if the video has more than 500 frames, like mine, and I write from the hundredth frame, the character will appear with his back turned to the camera. From the 178th frame onwards, he is positioned sideways. In this case, it no longer works as intended. After two days of attempting the scientific poke method, I decided to read the documentation and forms. I discovered that other people were experiencing the same problem, and there did not seem to be a specific solution available. It works for short ones, but not for longer ones. And, apparently, there is a problem with the algorithm, or there is some clever trick that the uninitiated are not aware of. In the end, I decided to edit this part separately and then apply a color correction to insert it into the main video so that it wouldn't be noticeable. To eliminate the distracting background, I have removed it from all the images, and I applied a single background image to all of the images. While this background may seem uninteresting, it could also be animated if desired, but that is not the main focus of today's lesson. Next, I scaled up these frames, and here is the result. While I think it looks good, there is still plenty of room for improvement. You can download all the materials of this lesson from my Patreon at the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to my channel.